when you're ready. Hi, everybody. Hello. Okay, cool. Good evening. Um, I'm Kit. I'm one of the co-organizers of this session. Um, I hope everybody had a great time yesterday and today. We're very excited to have you all here. Um, I would like to introduce our first speaker, um, which was listed as Lynn, but Rosalind up here. Uh, if you are in the room, feel free to come up and start presenting. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Lynn Dabud from the University of the Philippines. My supervisor is Risa Batista Navarro from the University of Manchester. I will present our work on extracting reproductive condition and habitat information from text using a transformer-based information extraction pipeline. Next slide, please. You actually have a clicker. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. Here you go. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we all know that we all know that textual documents hold a bulk of knowledge about biodiversity. Um, although there exist widely used biodiversity databases that contain structured information on species and their occurrences, such as GBEEF and ALA, um, textual documents um, such as scientific literature still remains a major repository for much of our knowledge about the natural world. And these represent centuries of investment, hard work of our scientists. The classical way of populating a database is done by a human curator. The curator gets from textual documents, gets data from textual documents and stores the data into a database. A database contains structured data that are ready to be used for analysis. They are very useful in generating long-term plots or geographically broad-scale distribution. However, in this dig digital age, textual data are becoming more numerous. There are thousands of digital pages being published every month in open access biology and ecology journals. This makes database curation by humans more laborious and time-consuming. Hence the need for more information extraction tools. Unstructured data can be made more accessible and useful for large scale studies if there are tools and services that automatically extract meaningful information from text and store it in structured formats, for example, in open biodiversity databases. And this information extraction tools are created by human experts who understand details and patterns in data. Understanding the biology underpinning the natural regeneration of plant species in order to make plants for effective reforestation is a complex task. This can be aided by providing access to databases that contain long-term and wide-scale geographical information on species distribution, habitat, and reproduction. Darwin Core, as we all know, is an internationally agreed data standard that includes terms that are used to represent information on species reproductive condition and habitats. Reproductive condition, for example, can be populated with values such as in bloom and flowering, while habitat can be populated with values such as dry riverbeds and rainforests. Here is an example of a data stored in ALA. It includes data for habitat and reproductive condition fields. Precise timing and fruit collection and knowledge of reproductive activities is necessary, especially in tropical regions where many trees are recalcitrant and have very short viability. Reproductive activities such as flowering and fruiting in the case of plants are timed events within the species life cycle that are associated with seasonal timings. As a life event, reproductive condition, is studied in association with its coupling factor, which is time. In this work, we extract from text 
related reproductive and temporal expression information. Also, understanding species habitat preferences is another aspect of a successful reforestation. With a changing ecosystem affected by factors such as climate change, deforestation, and desertification, a complete knowledge of what grows where that used to be geographic-based distribution of species is now being augmented by more data-driven approaches that associate information and habitats to distribution data. Hence, we also extract information um, on habitat that are related uh, are, that has um, related geographical location information. In this work, we aimed at developing an information extraction pipeline that extracts finer grain structured data on reproductive condition and habitats from textual documents. In order to accomplish this aim, we have set the following research objectives. The first one is to develop a method to extract biodiversity named entities from text. For example, um, entities such as habitat and geographical location. The second is to develop a method that leverages state-of-the-art transformer language models to extract related habitat and geographical location mentions and related re reproductive condition and temporal expressions. Transformer-based pre-trained language models are large language models that were pre-trained on large-scale corpora using, lar um, using unsupervised learning objectives such as masked language modeling. These PLMs can be fine-tuned for downstream tasks such as question answering and natural language inference using relatively smaller amount of task or domain-specific label data. And lastly, in our objectives um, for this work, we store the extracted re related entities as a graph database. A graph database would allow queries and further analysis of the data. In this work, we obtained our corpus from the forestry compendium of the CABI Digital Library. We selected 323 open access data sheets on plant species. Each data sheet contains information about one species. It includes information on morphological description, importance, distribution, growth, reproduction, phenology, habitat, and ecology. We pre-processed the da text data using Python's natural language toolkit, specifically the sentence spl splitter and tokenizer. On your right is an example of a data sheet in CABI. So this work on NER um, was done by our undergraduate students, Tabano and Pagdanganan, and is currently in process. Um, for NER, um, we fine-tuned Cybert, specifically the Cybert CyvoCab case ver uh, version available in Hugging Face. Cybert is a BERT-based model that was pre-trained pre on scientific text. We fine-tuned Cybert using the Copius corpus, which is a gold standard corpus for biodiversity named entities. We fine-tuned it using three epochs, 13 batch size, and a learning rate of two by 10 to the negative five. In this work, we are particularly interested on geographical location, habitat, and temporal expression entities. We, <laughs> we run on the test set or cyber fiction on Copius and gave us this um, F1 scores. So the F1 score is a harmonic mean of precision and recall. Um, for reproductive condition, we simply use a dictionary-based approach to identify mentions of reproductive conditions in text. So our relation extraction approach is unsupervised. This means that we've, um, even without a large amount of label data, we were able to extract relations from text. And this one, just this week, um, I received a notification that um, our paper on this work um, has been accepted um, to an NLP um, conference. 
um, given an input sentence that is, that is a sequence of tokens um, that contains a source entity and a target entity, we treat the RE task as a binary classification task whereby the RE method determines whether a relationship from the source entity to the target entity exists or not. In this work, we focus on these two relation types, the has time and has um, location relation. So reproductive condition, has time, temporal expression, and then habitat has location, geographical location. Our relation extraction method is a two-step approach. We first implement a classical rule-based approach to extract entities that match rules um, that we created. If our rules identify a pair of source and target entities as related, the relationship is stored in the database. Otherwise, we implement a zero-shot natural language inference approach to determine if the pairs and, uh, of entities are related or not. So for our rule-based approach, we created rules based on syntactic patterns that were observed in the sentences. And we implemented pattern matching using regular expressions to extract related biodiversity entities. So given an input sentence and a, a sequence of the, um, that is a sequence of tokens, we firstly categorize every token according to the following types, the source, target, the limiter, and other, as described on that table. To extract relations, we created this regex rules. So we have two rules here. Basically, the rule, these two rules um, extract um, entities that are appear consecutive in a sentence. And then for the next second step, we cast our RE problem as a natural language inference problem that we address using transformer-based model. So NLI is a task of determining whether a hypothesis is true, an entailment, false, or neutral, given a premise which corresponds to some known knowledge about the subject. So we used um, text-to-text -to -text transfer transformer um, T5 as our model. Um, uh, so it is um, a model that... Um, uh, has a sequence to sequence uh, that solves sequence to sequence learning problem. Um, specifically, we use the T5 large that has 770 million parameters. Given an input sentence and a source entity and a target entity for which we um, wish to determine whether a relation holds, we systematically generate a premise hypothesis pair which serves as input to the NLA problem. So to the NLI model, rather. The table shows that NLI, this, the templates, NLI templates we created for each relation, relation type with some examples. 10% of our corpus was manually annotated by a computer science gra um, graduate student. This includes 521 data for the has location relations, relation type and 200, uh, 217 data for the has time relation type. Our unsupervised hybrid approach for RE, when ran on our labeled data, resulted to 84.7% um, F score for the HAS location and 83.6% for the HAS time relation. So here we store the entities and relationships we extracted into a graph database. We use the Neo4j software for this um, graph database. Using Neo4j, we can easily create um, entities as nodes and relations. We can query our database and display the results as visual graphs. In this example, as you can see, we made a query to see the species and habitat that are in Australia. And all this data came from the CABI data set that we got from uh, um, the website, um, which are op open access. And in this second example, we made a query to see the species that flowers in December and are in Africa. Again, these are all from the CABI data set, data sheet. Therefore, without the availability of a large amount of labeled data, we were able to develop NER, named Entity Recognition and Relation Extraction Methods for Biodiversity. We showed that unstructured data when extracted from text and stored in a graph database can be more useful for further analysis. We also showed that our information extraction pipeline works for textual documents from the CABI Digital Library. So I'd like to this, um, thank my advisory committee, 
this are them and then our students. And again, I'm Lynn Gabud, and that is my email address if anyone is interested in collaborating and working together. So just kindly email me and thank you for listening. I hope. Thank I you so much. Awesome. So we don't have time for questions right now, but we do have a 15 minute discussion session at the end of this. So if you do have a question that you'd like to ask in person, please feel free to hold on to it. Some housekeeping things that I literally just decided on is I know that the alarm was kind of scary. So I'm going to lift up a two minute warning um, when you're near your two minutes. And I will also have an overtime slide. So be on the lookout for that. Um, without 